Hello, Facebook audience. We got a great show Live today. From our nation's capital. Right now. It's the inside scoop. All right, Mark, you ready? Mark yeah. Levine. All right, here you go. Good afternoon, America. Welcome to the Inside Scoop from Washington. I am your host, Mark Levine, reporting live from the Center for American Progress in Washington, D.C. Tuesday night was a very interesting special election. Uh, it's a special election in the middle of August, so the uh, question is, what does it mean for November? I'm not sure, but I do know that Ohio's 12th district has not had a Democratic representative since 1983. It's been 35 years, consistently Republican. It's actually the district of the current Ohio governor, John Kasich. You may remember him. He ran for president uh, and did pretty well, I guess, by 2016 standards. Um, and um, the Republican, you would think, would walk away with it. Uh, Donald Trump won the district by 11 points. Mitt Romney won it by 10 points. Solid, solid Republican district. Um, it is now, well, it's, it's too close to call. All the votes have been counted, at least all the votes cast on election day. They're still going through absentees and provisionals. The Republican is ever so slightly ahead. Uh, the New York Times reports him less than one percentage point ahead with 1,564 votes, but they're still counting some provisionals. It could go either way. Even if the Republican does eke out a victory, um, it's still a pretty dramatic switch for this district. My question for this hour, uh, and I have a really special guest I'll introduce you to in just a bit, but my question for this hour is, is Donald Trump helping or hurting the Republican Party, uh, given that this district, if this district is a bellwether or not, and frankly, with all the news that we're going to talk about in the press, is there daylight or should there be daylight between the president and the Republican Party? And to answer that question, I have a real die-in-the-wool Republican. Actually, a friend of mine. Yes, that's right. We can have friends across the aisle. I'll even show him on Facebook. For those of you on the Facebook, his name is Mike Lane. He's a Republican strategist. It's his job to get Republicans elected, and he's in Northern Virginia, so it's a particularly difficult job for him there. Um, Mike Lane, welcome back to the Inside Scoop. Thank you, Mark. And I think just for the record, we should let everybody know that not only have we been friends for 10 years, whatever, but you're also my elected delegate in the Virginia General Assembly. I represent him, so I can't be too mean to him, guys. Sorry. Um, but Mike, I got to tell you, I've gone through today's Washington Post and just story after story after story talks about things that normally well, Republicans would get upset about. Uh, there's not just, um, you know, Donald Trump um, not taking action against Vladimir Putin, having attacked us. There's tariffs, tariffs, Chinese targets, 16 billions in, in U.S. goods. Uh, Republicans, and I think you, used to stand for free trade, so many tariffs that that Trump wants to give $12 billion to farmers. That would be welfare. Again, kind of thing usually Republicans are opposed to. Meanwhile, just to add insult to injury, in addition to Donald Trump's campaign manager being on trial and his deputy campaign manager fingering him in a pretty brutal trial in, in our hometown of Alexandria, Virginia, we have the very first lawmaker to ever endorse Donald Trump, Chris Collins, a New York congressman, um, I, you know, innocent until proven guilty, but let me tell you, if he's involved in this insider trading scheme, it looks really, really serious. And I guess the heart of my question, and it's all based on Ohio 12, but these other factors as well, is do you see a blue wave coming? Because I'm seeing a tsunami, but I'm biased. Uh, I, I, you and I talked on Virginia election day, and I was more optimistic for Democrats than you, but I admit I didn't see the blue wave coming. Now I see it coming. My question for you, do Republicans see it coming? And do they think it's caused by Donald Trump? And what are you doing about it? Well, okay, let's go back to Virginia. Okay. Uh, we did meet on election day. We, we chatted did. a little bit about it. You were more optimistic for your side than, than I was. It turned out we both underestimated no uh, the size of the whole thing. Uh, and I think that, you know, using that as the launching pad, there really hasn't been a lot of change uh, that's taken place in the electoral map that I've seen. So when you look forward to 2018 and you ask me, you know, is there a blue wave coming? You called it a tsunami from your perspective. Uh, the question is, how do you define wave? This feels we're taking the House of Representatives. This feels eerily to me exactly like 2010. In me fact, too. in fact, you and I actually talked about 2010. Right. And you predicted a Republican wave. And I was right. nervous. Right. 
Are um, we in the reverse situation now? I, I, you know, let me talk about the similarities. The similarities are really Obama and Trump. Um, they're exactly alike in this case. Uh, when President Obama and President Trump are on the ballot, they're extraordinarily successful at motivating their peeps to get out and vote. And when they're not on the ballot, they're extraordinarily good at motivating their opposition to go out and vote. Uh, Donald Trump uh, is not on the ballot this time. Uh, he's extraordinarily good at motivating his opposition uh, to go to the polls. I think we've seen that time after time after time uh, since he's been elected, starting with the Virginia, or well, actually starting with the uh, special election in Atlanta um, down uh, Yeah, there's that, Alabama, in, there's you know. Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania. Um, I mean, there's example after example. So getting back to your tsunami question. Yeah. Uh, okay, so in 2010, the Republicans picked up 63 seats. Mm -hmm. I don't see that for a number of reasons that we can get into, but quite honestly, they're in the weeds. If you define a wave as taking control of the House, I do. Uh, that would be 23 seats. You agree with me, the Democrats are going to take the House. That would be 23 seats. Right. I think that uh, I think we're going to be much closer to the historical average, which is right, right now between 31 and 33 in that area. Okay. All right. I, I, I'll, I'll go for a little bit higher than that, but the heart of it is you and I both agree the Democrats are going to take the House. There's still 90 days left. Yes, there are. Uh, plenty can change, but I'm very glad... Uh, the election is not being held today. One of the things I always liked about you, Mike, is that um, even though you and I disagree on many policies, I think you're, uh, I think you fairly give me your prediction, uh, which is separate from your wish. And uh, I agree with you, Democrats could take the House. I'll give you between 50 and 60 rather than 30 and 40. But the main thing is who controls that gavel. And I think it's going to be Nancy Pelosi. Uh, not whoever, whatever Republican. Well, it, you know, Ryan. it's up to you guys whether or not it'll it's Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi or somebody else. But uh, it'll be I, Pelosi. all right. So now that now the Senate, I'll be the first to admit, is really, really hard this year, not because of Trump, not because of the wave, uh, uh, but because just there's actually there are more seats being defended by Democrats, but be defending by the party out of power than I, I looked it up since any time since the popular election of senators began 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really hard. I do think it's possible, though, and it would take a bit of a tsunami. Uh, I'll be I'll fully admit it's hard. If I have to give a prediction, I'll predict 50 50. I predict we gain one seat, but we might just gain two seats. And I think, you know, I think they're going to come from uh, Tennessee, Nevada and Arizona. We need two of the three and we have to hold all our Democrats. I would say the most dangerous for us are Indiana and Missouri with North Dakota being a close third. I'm not really worried about the other Democrats. I don't know what your views are. I, you know, I think you've outlined it fairly well. Um, I would I would expand the board a little bit um, more than that. I would say, Florida? Uh, well, let me say worst case scenario for us. Um, you know, I think you guys could go up uh, up one to two seats in the Senate. Yeah, two um, seats is critical because we take control. You know, we're, we're, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm saying you could have a 52-48 majority. Well, worst, yeah. well, worst case yeah, scenario. The worst case is we win Arizona, Nevada, and Tennessee and hold right. all our incumbents. And, and then, best case for us. And, and best like, case for you. And then best case for us is we could go up five. So, nah, that's uh, not gonna I'm not. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to get 52 either, but no, you know, I'm, I'm just saying either. I think case. I think we will get um, uh, one or two. And two, of course, is critical. OK. And, and I, I would, think worst case for us is zero is that it doesn't change. And I and I would I would say if you force me to bet right now, I would bet um, net plus two for the R's. OK, I'll, if I had to bet, I'll bet net plus one for the Dems. OK. And we'll, we'll see. We'll see where we go after this. All right. But my larger question, I mean, we can all play predictions and, and no one really knows until it happens. But my larger question for you is, is Donald Trump, does he help or hinder your party right now? If, if, if you're a Republican in a purple district, do you want him to come or not come? Because Troy Balderson, uh, the uh, Republican in Ohio 12, asked Trump to come. Kasich, who used to have the seat, thought it was a bad idea. Told, told uh, Congressman Balderson, you know what? I really think that's a bad idea. Uh, he, Trump came in and they're in a squeaker in a district that y'all should win by 10 points. Uh, I don't know whether you think that was a factor or not, but in these, no one's talking about the ruby red districts because those aren't flippable. But when it comes to the 60 odd seats that Cook says are are difficult for Republicans, do you bring Trump in? OK, so let me answer your first question first, which okay. was, does Trump help yeah. or hurt right. the, uh, the, the battle for the Congress? Right. The answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> He, but uh, I'm not talking about Ruby Red districts. I'm talking about the districts right. that can flip. I mean, I mean, if you tell me he helps, you know, a district that's plus 50 Republican, right. it doesn't matter. So I have a different viewpoint than John Kasich uh, does, and and perhaps different from you. 
Um, I actually think the reason that uh, the um, uh, wasn't Balderdash or you know ba- ba- Bal- ba- Balder, whatever his yeah, name is, yeah, uh, the reason he uh, he won or or is ahead right now during barely, the counting barely, barely. Uh, is because of Trump. I think he would have lost if Trump had not gone to that district. So you now, think that Trump helps in swing districts? Well, this is a suburban. District. No, no, no. I think I think Trump drove an extra couple thousand uh, people in turnout out there. That was very. That was the margin of difference for the Republican in Ohio 12. But if you don't have Donald Trump doing what Donald Trump does in the in the White House in the first place anyway, then the Republican wins that district by eight, 10 points, as well, you pointed I, right. out. So, so, so I, I think, so, so what I'm saying is, you know, Donald Trump creates the environment that we're in. But when you have a particularly close race like that, if you send the president out there, his, his opponents, his adversaries, the, the never Trumpers, the hate Trumpers, uh, we'll come out no the, matter what. They're they're already there. So if Donald Trump goes out there in a really close race and motivates five, six, seven, ten thousand more people to come out and vote, that's a net plus for us because the anti-Trump people are already coming. Okay, but let me ask you my basic question. Uh, so we'll, we'll put political prog- prognostication aside and just talk about sort of where your heart is, where your brain is. We have a, a president who's sucking up to the Russian dictator. I, I don't think you dispute that, do you? Uh, yeah, I don't think he's sucking up to that. I mean, he just threw more sanctions on yesterday, Mark. Was it him or was his administration? I mean, uh, yes, there are definitely people in the administration that don't like Russia. I'm not disputing that. But um, I mean, here, experts, this is in the Washington Post. I'll, I'll turn my Facebook around and show, show, show the headline. Uh, experts say that uh, Trump lacks urgency on Russian threat. Um, and uh, it goes on to talk about the fact that while people in his administration, which I don't dispute, have problems with Russia, uh, Trump, uh, here you have uh, Rand Paul delivering a secret message, and, and Rand Paul is one of those people who, like Donald Trump, says, oh, America, Russia, they, they both do bad things. I, I know, look, Mike, you and I have known each other for 15 years now. You would never say, Ah, oh, Russia's bad. America's bad. We both do bad things. You would never put them in the same category. No, 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 no. America's good. Russia is bad. Right. Putin is bad. Right. We agree on that. But um, I'm not so sure about our president. I mean, he's the one every time they talk about uh, Bill O'Reilly says, you know, Putin's a killer. And he's like, well, you know, we, we've killed people ourselves, too. Kind of missing the point. Well, <laughs> we do. Let's let's go. Let's go right into the um, uh, the, the uh, uh, efforts to influence our elections. Okay. I, I find them laughable. Look. We, we Facebook just found allegedly another hundred accounts that were of Russian yep. origin, yes, they did. and they each had you know maybe a thousand followers or I, something I, like I, that, I and they Post and they were says, trying to you know I mean no wait no wait, wait Washington Post today has, hold on one of these many articles here it says that forty thousand people attended events scheduled by the Russian scheduled by a Russian account okay nothing QAnon uh, it's the new conspiracy yeah, I don't theory I don't even know who that idiot is that's well. <laughs> I'm hoping he's punking uh, the Trump is frankly. Right. I, I really don't know who he is, but um, uh, it's more than that. And this, and and uh, we have to take a break soon. But but they, the Russians, and I know this just from frankly working in the Virginia House and attending a cybersecurity seminar. The Russians have attempted to hack into every one of the 50 states' databases. That's what concerns me, and it should concern you. And uh, while though they haven't changed outcomes that we know of. Uh, We know that in at least two states, and the only one that's been public is Illinois, they've gotten in and they've changed voter databases. They've changed who's on the rolls so that it's kind of the same. It's not quite the same as stuffing the ballot box, but it's kind of the same because when uh, Mr. Smith goes in to vote, his name's not on the voter rolls. Uh, Luckily, we have provisional ballots. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Mr. Smith may just go away and not vote. I mean, that is a way to change an election. we got to take a break, but we'll come back. 888-488-MARK, you want to join us? 888-488-6275, right back after this. One of my listeners writes, uh, Trump doesn't love America and Russia equally. He loves Russia more. Who says that? Oh, one of your guys. One, okay. Yeah, so one of the listeners. So, folks, if you have questions for Mike or me, feel free to call in. Otherwise, we have plenty to talk about. 888-488-MARK, 888-6275. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Mark. I will keep my mouth close to the mic. I'm. Uh, no worries. I, it's when I was getting my newspaper article I figured, out. Yeah. That's when I was... Uh, 
Wow, we already have four colors. Is this from? Is this old? No, no, no. This is that's last time. Okay, wait a minute. That's yesterday. Are the Reggie's today? No, the Reggie yesterday. Okay, all right. No colors. Fine. Perfectly fine. So we'll get into Russia, but I still want to get into sort of my larger question of the Republican brand. I mean, we can. I'll let you finish your point because I cut you off about Russia and yeah. cybersecurity. But 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 the heart of what I'm trying to get at is is the Republican brand damaged. That that's just sort of my overall okay. theme, and that's where I'll bring Reggie up. Reggie actually just did Rubio. call just now. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. Mike and I'll tussle a little bit more. I think before uh, no we get to old. callers. Thanks for your Certain regulars always come. I mean, the, the title is GOP debates Trump Trump effects. So, okay, you said that he helps. No, uh, you know what? Here's, when he comes to a race, that's a different question from I th what, the craziness what, yeah, that what, is. What, what I meant, Trump. He's already driven the opposition batshit to oh, the polls. Oh, yeah. So it can't get any worse. I see what you. No, I get your point. I get your point. Apparently, Facebook Russians got forty thousand. This is that's this article. Over the past fifteen months, at least forty thousand said they were. This is actually anti-Trump rallies from um, from face from Russia. Facebook. Yeah, they're just trying to. You oh know, no, 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 they're, 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 they're everybody. Feel Bernie, you know, I Bernie. They supported Bernie Sanders big time. That's the other thing that people mm -hmm. uh, and I. I certainly remind people on the left that too. They just really Putin hates Hillary because Hillary would have stood up to him more than Bernie or Donald. I don't think even you'd disagree with that. Ah, come on, I don't, you know, Hillary, <laughs> Hillary was the one that went over there with a reset button that couldn't even be spelled right. Um, during that time- Did which, I spell it right, Mr. By, Secretary? By, by the way, um, <laughs> no. you'll recall that I was opposed to that reset when it happened. I'm, I've been consistent on that. And I, mm -hmm. I honestly think that was more Obama than Hillary, I think he ordered her to do that. And of course yeah, he did. The other thing to remember, of course he did. Is, that was that was one of his. The other thing is that yeah. Medvedev was in charge, well, putatively in charge at that time. We did not know that Putin was going to come back for a third term. Medvedev, while bad, was nothing near like Putin. So you could at least see why they might. Again, I was against it, but it's very different from right, today. So can we agree that Medvedev? was in large measure, maybe not 100%, but in large member, measure a Putin puppet. I mean, Putin was pulling the strings from the sidelines. It's interesting. There was some point near the end of Medvedev's presidency where there actually were reported, reported out loud disagreements between the two of them, which is why I think he shoved him aside and, mm -hmm. and made himself president. I, I, don't, I don't think we knew in 2010 quite that Putin was an absolute dictator. I, I, I just don't think it can be denied since 20. 13, 14, since Georgia and Ukraine, and I, I don't think anyone denies that too. But my only defense for something that I didn't support was, I think the tea leaves were more unclear in 2010. I read them as don't trust them, but. Ready, Mark? Yep. Here you go. Welcome back to Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. My guest is Republican strategist Mike Lane, talking about the upcoming midterms and the Trump effect. There's an article in the Washington Post front page in the in the best spot they have in the newspaper, GOP debates Trump effect and uh, whether Donald Trump is helping or hurting the party. So I thought I'd ask an actual GOPer, uh, Mike Lane, uh, my friend from a long time, even though we disagree on virtually everything. Uh, actually, we agree on, frankly, more than people would suspect that, that than we agree on. But um, I didn't want to cut you off before you were talking about. Yeah, the, I, I, the, let me make my point quick and, and then we can go. So, OK, I'm not worried about 10 or 100 or even a thousand, you know, phony Russian uh, Facebook and Twitter accounts that, you know, have relatively few followers and combined get as many as 30 or 40,000 people to come out to different things. They're on both sides. They're trying to disrupt American politics. They're really not trying to elect anybody in particular. Those things don't don't bother me, and I hope we do the same thing to them. What does bother me is what you were talking about just before the break, and that is an attempt to hack into our election databases 
uh, by extension, you might say that they're not only trying to hack into the databases, but they're hacking into any part of the election system that they can, uh, strictly for nefarious purposes. There's absolutely no reason other than just screwing with our stuff that they would do something like this. And so that scares the hell out of me. And I'm very, I'm very glad to see that the president ordered his team uh, to really, you know, crack down and, and, and be prepared for this by election day. See, I don't see that, Mike. I, he, he did do the sanctions on Russia because of the chemical weapons attack against Great Britain, which I'm glad he did, where they killed uh, those, those Russians in Great Britain by poison. That's what the economic sanctions mm-hmm. were for. Congress actually put them out, you know, a year ago. The administration's following follow suit. I support that. Better late than never. But when it comes to actually protecting against cybersecurity, you know, the members of the administration that I trust, I, Chris Ray, FBI director, I went to law school with him. I think he's an honest man. I think he's mm-hmm. an honorable man. Um, he sees the threat. He talks about the threat. But um, they, they just, the Washington Post, this is a, a headline, uh, experts, Trump's team lacks urgency on Russian threat, uh, interviewed 100 cybersecurity experts, 94 said uh, we weren't doing hardly anything. To, to fight this. And uh, well, there was a press uh, conference just three or four days ago where yeah, the I heads of it. all those things said, we've just finished our meeting with the president. He has ordered us to make this the priority and, you know, carry it out and make sure that our elections are safe come election day in 90 days or whatever the magic number is. Yeah, that's, that's not quite how I heard the press conference. I heard that those people really care and I don't dispute any of them. Dan Coates, I, I really, I don't think, I, don't, I think they're good people, which is why I think that we have a chance of them carrying it out. But, uh, you know, Dan Coates said something to the effect of, uh, I don't want to get the exact words, but something to the effect of, you know, uh, we, we're, gonna, we're, we're going to try to make sure that our elections are fair, which just didn't, <laughs> you know, we're going to try to make sure our elections are fair. That it just, it just, you didn't suffer from. It wasn't from... like, we're going to guarantee <laughs> that we never have a corrupted election. I mean, you know. It, so it, you're not suffering from overconfidence is I'm, what you know. I'm not suffering from overconfidence. Um, we're going to have to take a break. When we come back, though, I want to get to the question of the Republican brand. Okay. Because whether it's Russia or free trade or corporate welfare, which I remember you really complaining about with Barack Obama, yep. uh, you know, the farmer stuff, the um, uh, even even the separation of children, which many Republicans, Republican, obviously we Democrats hate it, but many Republicans didn't like that policy, didn't think it was fair. Um, whether your brand is being hurt. Is the Republican Party as a brand suffering because Donald Trump is acting, shall we say, not very Republican in your, your view? So that's my question when we come back. Folks, if you want to join in, 888-48-MARK, 888-48-6275. I'll be right back after this. Never confuse Mark Levine with right-winger Mark Levin. The second that would be a hard confusion. <laughs> oh, it happens all the time, not, not based on our views, to be sure. My name is Mira Would you support a bill banning 3D gun blueprints? I'm going to introduce one this year. Um... I hope so. They get around all the laws that supposedly you support but, about background checks no, no, and felons. No, 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 but, but, it's not a free speech but, right to not to build a gun. No, Any more than to build a nuclear weapon. No, no, no. But you talk, you found two things. First is the publishing of the plans. That's right. a free speech thing. Actually taking the plans and doing something. That's a whole different um, story. Uh, Let's talk about now. free speech. Uh, should someone be allowed to publish on the web, this is how you build a nuclear bomb? It's already out there. Mm. It's already out there explosives ieds it's all it's all out there i it's i realize that north korea and iran and and so forth but but there are plenty of other petty dictators that would like a nuclear bomb that haven't um i don't think the level of detail is out there at least i I hope not but 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 it actually applies the question whether it's out there or not do you think that if someone says here's your easy guide to building nuclear weapons we can prohibit that as a matter of law. I think that is an exception to free speech. Um, probably. Let, let's talk about okay. the 3D guns. Here's yeah. the thing. It's perfectly legal to build your own gun right now. Yeah. And so uh, is there something different about a 3D printer gun? Uh, it's plastic. Than, than, it goes through airports. without it gets it around security. That's well, except for the fact problem. that this particular one is not plastic. It's, it's 90% plastic, but it has enough metal in there. Well, only that one pin needs... that you can easily carry separately. You can mail the pin. I mean, the it's it's ninety nine percent plastic. There's just the firing pin. It's the only thing that's metal. I mean, they're right. they're talking in here about about. I mean, the All court right. so far hasn't joined it. So so far, it's not right. legal. 
but um, I, I think they're gonna, I think the court's going to give them permission to publish it, and I think we need a law to stop it. I don't think the courts are the place to go. I think okay. it's legal. That that's a fair point, but 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 um, my question is: Would you support a bill like I'm going to introduce? Yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. I would to, support to ban the publishing of. All right, glad to hear that. See, well, I don't know how you can. You, you, should, you have you should a criminal ban, penalty for for. You should ban the manufacture of it because if it's published in California on the net, how you know how's Virginia law going to? Um... Well, you could ban Virginians, anyone that we have jurisdiction over. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, we don't just have jurisdiction in Virginia over Virginians. We have jurisdiction over anyone who does business in, in Virginia, whoever we have personal jurisdiction over under the constitutional standards. In other words, as wide a net as we can legally cast. All right. So and if then I, we're going to ask California to do it for California. And, and uh, so if I upload that thing, can California arrest me? Um, if I upload it from Virginia? It's, it, it would be up to the the uh, uh, international shoe standards of whether or not California has personal jurisdiction over you right. that a court would decide. I mean, that's, but, but, um, you know, look, if this, if they do it federally, obviously I don't have to do a thing, but uh, if you they don't do it federally. You ought to include nuclear plans in there too. Make you it, know what? Make it broad-based. Make will. it broad-based. I'll be happy to. Fair point. Fair point. Kind of makes my point and I certainly have no problem. <laughs> saying it's illegal to <laughs> upload. I, I do not want my name, my lovely neighbors, and they are lovely, but I don't want anyone uh, to have easy uh, blueprints building, for a nuclear weapon. Building yeah, basement no. nukes? Yeah, no, that would be, that would be bad. That would definitely be bad. One thing about having you on the air, Mike, is, is our show goes very quickly. It does. No struggle for conversation. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> no struggle. We'll get a little bit to Mueller too. We'll just go wherever. But but I'm gonna start with the with the brand question. Okay. Then we'll spend as little or as much time on that as yeah, you want. We'll, we'll just uh, I mean, I'll answer it succinctly, and then well, you can go, you can probe. Go wherever or... you want to go. I mean, I, this is kind of the heart of the show, so it may be a longer answer than. Uh... Hello, Facebook audience. As you probably know, this these conversations are not on the air, but. But nonetheless, they are on Facebook. Yeah, there you go. So they are on record. Mark Levine. Ready? Ready. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. My guest is Republican strategist Mike Lane. Uh, the Washington Post has an article today that says GOP debates Trump effect. Uh, and the question is whether or not, that's the wrong thing to show. But there we go. There it is. Uh, whether or not elections like the 12th District of Ohio that just occurred Tuesday. And more importantly, what um, both Mike and I agree will be a blue wave. We, we disagree on how will it be a wave or a tsunami. Both of us agree that uh, the Democrats are going to take over the House. But whether or not this blue wave is caused by Trump, accelerated by Trump, maybe Mike's going to say it's just your typical midterm where the party out of power always does better. But I would suggest that Donald Trump is very different from, oh, let's say Marco Rubio, who uh, I, I know Mike has told me he voted for and supported. In the Virginia um, primary. In the Virginia primary. Uh, but different from Mitt Romney, different from John McCain. I can give you a whole host of Republican standard bearers, different from George W. Bush, Bob Dole. I mean, going back as far as I can go, um, Republicans used to support free trade. They used to oppose corporate welfare. They used to oppose really big debt. They used to um, oppose Russia. I seem to recall a certain a Republican president that said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. I think y'all like him, Ron, Ronald something. Yeah, Ronnie. Um, I think he's spinning in his grave right now. How has your brand changed or suffered? Or how does someone who I know supports these, I think you support free trade. I think you're anti-Russia. I think you're, uh, you're against big debt. Um, I don't think you support corporate welfare. You and I have talked for 15 years. How do you deal with your own beliefs and what I think used to be Republican brand beliefs and this guy who's the president. All right, let's start with the tariffs. Okay. Um, you're right, I'm, I'm a free trader guy, and um, what Donald Trump has decided is that we don't have free trade, we don't have enough free trade, and I don't believe he is using the tariffs as a policy as much as he is using it as a weapon or a tactic to convince our trading partners to have more fair trade and more free trade with us. Now, if he's right and wins this in a relatively short period of time, uh, then of course all the tariffs go away, uh, very little harm done, and the market opportunities for all of our uh, goods and services expand dramatically across the board. 
On the other hand, if it turns out that uh, he, he is not successful in using these weapons, uh, the question is, uh, what do we do now? Remember that scene from uh, uh, Robert Redford's uh, The Candidate, you know, when they got elected? Uh-oh, what do we do now? Um, you know, once you get into something, you got to carry it all the way through. And if the uh, if, if Obama if, had done if, this, if would the, you have supported the Euro- it, Mike? If the Europeans and the uh, Canadians don't back down and don't give us what we're looking for, uh, then we're in trouble. And and it turns out that a tactic uh, is now a policy, which is a bad policy. So, um, first of all, would you have supported this if Obama had done it? Um, depending on how he explained it, probably not. Um, yeah. but you know, he, he may have, well, go, let's go country you know, by I, country. I mean, I'll give him a chance to convince me, but let's go, probably country, not. By, let's go country by country. Europe and, 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 China, and Canada aren't, aren't backing down one bit. Um, they're well, being, Europe, Europe blinked a little. No, uh, not really. All they promised to do is what they'd already promised to do before. Uh, all they did was reaffirm prior trade stances. Uh, that Donald Trump with, declared victory. With, it's kind of like when North Korea says, oh, I'm going to agree with what we've always agreed on for the last 10 years, and Donald Trump declares victory, and then they go about with well, the testing. With, with a promise to go back to the negotiating table and get as close to a, you know, no trade barriers at all as they can. I think Trump raises a big fuss. I, I think this is true, whether it's Korea or Russia or Europe or China or Canada. Uh, Donald Trump raises a big fuss, makes a big deal out of it. Nobody backs down, and then he claims victory. I, that's what I see as a pattern again and again and again in all these countries. China is, is slapping $16 billion in, in U.S. goods. Uh, um, it's uh, Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think China's in a different category. Well, China, uh, you know, for one thing, it, China is, is not our friend. I mean, they are our competitor. Uh, you know, when you call Canada a national security threat, I think you have a screw loose. Uh, and of course, I, get, I guess I'm saying I think the president you know, has screwed it. Was, it was a legal peg on which to hang a, a, a tariff. That was all. Do you support dishonest legal pegs? I know you don't think Canada is a national security. Threat. No, no. But but here's the thing, Mark. You know, you it, it is it is for a long time generally believed that you ought to have your own industrial means of production. Uh, to finance your national security needs. Now we have certain neighbors. Are we and really allies. worried about Canada um, um, turning against us? I mean, I think the War of 1812 is over. Uh, I think I think we're past it now. It's been a couple hundred years. It's not too soon. Uh, suppose suppose Canada is um, is attacked by a nuclear weapon and no longer has the capabilities of doing it. Um, we are under an alliance called NATO where we right exactly Canada. I, right, not, but, I hope but, you're but, not but, suggesting we wouldn't respond if Canada were no, attacked. no, but now we don't ha- now we can't rely on their steel, is my point, because they've been wiped out. And so, you know, how is that different from them hitting um, Pennsylvania and knocking out our steel plants? Uh, to me, an attack well, on Canada is an attack on the United States. It absolutely it's, okay. That's what NATO's all about. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it, it's the same difference. I mean, uh, to me, Canada's assets are our assets in, in an emergency, and I have zero doubt that Canada would be with us as they've been with us consistently Absolutely. for a, no, I'm a not century. T- I'm not talking about them changing their mind or changing their agreement or changing their policy. I'm talking about their their production abilities being wiped off the map. That's my point. I think uh, our production facilities have as much likelihood of being wiped off the map as Canada's production facilities because both mean World War Three. But that being said, you're a free trader. Mm-hmm. This is against the Republican brand. We, we can give other examples. Um, you're clearly harsher on Putin, and your party used to be. I mean, Republicans used to complain that we Democrats were too soft on Russia. I, 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 I don't think I'm crazy. I remember people, you pinko communists. That, right. was, that was the you slang. Rem- remember the uh, scene with uh, President Obama talking with uh, Med, what is it, Medvedev? Med- Medvedev. <laughs> Medvedev and saying, right. and Republicans please, please, went, tell, please tell Vladimir that I'll be much more easy and, and flexible with him after my election. went crazy about that. Of course that. we did. But now, good. according to a recent poll, um, just in 2016, only 20% of Republicans felt favorably towards Russia. It's now 40%. 40% of your party feels favorably toward Vladimir Putin. Does that statistic surprise you? I got the poll right here. It's double. It's um, to 40. All right. So these 40% need to be sent to re-education camps. Okay. Well, well, Mike, but that's part of my question. As a Republican, how do you deal with, we've got the trade, we've got Russia, we've got the corporate welfare, the $12 billion in, in farm subsidies uh, that you know Trump wants to pay because to, to counteract his other policy, which is mm-hmm. the tariffs, you don't support farm subsidies. 
look again it's a tactic if if the farm subsidies are there for six months while we win the trade threat and renegotiate the deal it's it's a pill i'm willing to swallow to make the patient better and if we don't um, win but so if, much but if we're, we're but if we're two years into this and we mm-hmm. still have subsidies and we still have tariffs and we're not getting anywhere then it is nothing short of a disaster okay do you think that republican voters are torn or do you think the answer is they just say whatever trump says i will I, not you i think there are no there there are some trump bots um without a doubt i like that uh, trump bot i may there, use that okay there are some trump bots but uh you know most people think for themselves and i think most people understand that it's a tactic i think that the unfortunately the europeans and the canadians understand it's a tactic as well and so therefore they're not they're going to they're not going to budge an inch we're, they know well, they know this is a this mexico's is, already budging you know i mean what's mexico doing they're they ain't paying for that wall well, who cares if they pay for the wall? You know, it's our wall. We should pay for it. But, uh, you know, it, it seems to me, Mark, we're going to come out of this better. The question is, are we going to come out enough better? Are things going to improve dramatically enough to justify the short-term dislocations see, that we're obviously going to go through? And I don't think we have the answer to that well, yet. See, but you're treating it like it's a coherent strategy. And part of the problem well, is— Well, I believe it is. I, I well, think it is. Part of the problem is we have a president who um, I think he tweeted 45 tweets out um, his first day on his vacation in New Jersey. He's very upset about Robert Mueller. He, you know, we have his campaign manager. I think he's going to jail. His deputy campaign manager admitting all these crimes, talking about- Yeah, they'll go to jail until the day after the election. And then Trump will pardon them. Mm -hmm. It's the day after which election? The the, the midterms or the- No, uh, 2020. 2020, after, after he wins re-election. Right. You know what? I, I appreciate your cynicism. I think it's very honest. Uh, I think we Democrats know that. I would do it. Well. If I was the president, you know, these guys, I'm not saying they didn't do anything wrong. It's very clear from the testimony that there's, you know, very likely possibility that they did some very serious things wrong. But none of this wouldn't have come out except for a phonied up investigation for a collusion that never happened. Whoa, whoa, and they're, whoa, they're finding whoa, whoa. this other stuff. Whoa. And so if they were, if they were, you know, my peeps, uh, the day after the election, phonied they'd have pho- up collusion. We've got not just Paul Manafort and Robert Gates. We've got but but Don but, but that's Jr. got nothing to We've do with it. We've got Jared Kushner. We've got Michael. Nothing Cohen. to do with it. Where collusion? Where? They met. Even even Steve Bannon called this a traitorous act. They met with Russian agents, even prepared for the meeting we now know two days before, in Trump Tower. Right. Anyone who doesn't think Donald Trump knew about the meeting, uh, I really th- I, do. You, I don't. Do you think Donald Trump did not know about the meeting? I Come don't. On. I don't care if he knew about the meeting. Don't care if he knew if about the I meeting. was the guy that got that email, I would have taken the meeting and I would have sat down and From said, "What do you guys agent. got?" Maybe you need to look at 18 U.S.C. 371, Mike, because Maybe. you take anything of value I, in a campaign. I don't know if they have anything of value. That's why I'm taking the meeting to find out what's going on. What do they got? And if it's something that needs to be reported, then I report it. But I would have taken the meeting. I see nothing and wrong with sitting have, down and saying, what do you the guys FBI got? FBI first or last or after the meeting? Uh, well, I, I mean, there's nothing happened in the meeting, so therefore there's no need to call them. I mean, they were sure. First shuckered. of all, I don't know that nothing happened in the meeting. Uh, we do know that that Donald Trump, two days before the meeting, happily declared, we're going to get some real good dirt on Hillary Clinton. And folks, I'm going to have this whole expose about Hillary Clinton. He said two days before the meeting, okay. interestingly enough, was the same day as the pre-meeting. Okay. okay? He says we're going to do this. And lo and behold, he doesn't say a word after that meeting where where maybe nothing occurred. Right. Um, and then uh, we also know that he publicly asked the Russians to help him out. Uh, and, and oh, that was a joke. Come on, Mark. We also know from from the indictments that they're going to prove, I think, that the the Russian activity stepped up that very day uh, to do espionage against the United States to to hack in. I don't understand this. It, it, do you think Richard Nixon, there's enough to impeach him in, in Watergate? I mean, they broke in to steal dirt on the political opponent. No foreign agents there. There's no evidence to this day that Richard Nixon knew about the break-in. All he did was yeah, cover it up. Yeah, see, I don't think, you know, the break-in was not impeachable offense. No, it but was, the cover-up. It up. was the cover-up right. and the obstruction of justice right. that it, was the impeachable it, it, offense. Right. Don't you think that Donald Trump has tried to cover up what happened and but there's obstruct no crime. justice? There's no, no, I don't think so because there's no crime. How can you obstruct justice when there's no crime? It's called espionage. Stealing from the hacking is a, it's, it's as much a, a, a crime when the Russians do it as when... G. Gordon Liddy does it. 
Okay, but they uh, all right. So what crime are we talking about again? I, I'm, I thought we were still focused on the meeting uh, at Trump Tower with Don Jr. and Paul Manafort and um, uh, Jared Kushner. Well, that would be a conspiracy so, uh, to commit, uh, conspiracy. But but they're but they it it was a nothing burger. It they came in there and they burger. wanted to talk about the McGinsky Act. They came in there on the pretext of, of saying we got good dirt, and then they had no good dirt. Did did did. Do you think that uh, Don Jr. or or had any reason to believe that the Russians legally got that dirt? They just they were doing the Russians were doing Google searches, I, and they just happened to find out that Hillary had uh, had they, problems with whitewater. He had did no they, idea what they found. He 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 doesn't he he was promised good dirt. He didn't have any specifics right, from a country that has a long history of espionage and um, and and murder. Uh, I mean, it, it, if it was if they had reportable information, yes, you call the FBI that afternoon within within one minute after the meeting's over. But it turned out I all they you, wanted to do was talk about adoption. I think you call them the, the day that the meeting is suggested. And I want to find out what they Steve, got. Steve Bannon thinks that. And he said this is yeah, actually well, traitorous. Steve Bannon, not high on my favorites list, but well, that's OK. Well, he probably was before he was. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, all right. Please. Okay, no, all no, right. no, no, no. Okay. I'll tell you. No, no. The two people that I'm so glad are gone, OK, yeah, is Steve, um, Bannon, Steve and Bannon and uh, that um, Hungarian guy, Borka. D D D oh, yeah, Gorka. Borka. Oh, he's scary. Gorka. He's scary. Th those are the two guys who were very Although, much better I'll tell you off who I miss. Gone. I miss the mooch. I kind of like the mooch. I, mean, I enjoyed the scary mooch. We're going to take a break. 888-488-MARK, 888-488-6275. Right back after this. Okay, we got a bunch of callers, which we'll get to. Okay, good. Mark Levine with right winger oh. Mark Levine. All right, so let me. Gorka, Gorka, same thing. Gorka. Which the other Mark lacks. All so right, so Tom in Columbus, Ohio. I wonder if he's in the district. Mark. That's 888-488-6275. Mark, did you see my... Yeah, I'm going to read the poll the right now. I'm going to read the poll right about now. The levels yeah, is, is my level high enough now? I yeah, it's, I think I when I'm talking with talking, Mike... It sounds too... All right, hold on, hold on. Is, is this better? Do it again. Is this better? Part of the problem, I think, is I'm looking at the, at the yeah. newspaper and all. All right. And then reduce the other mic level right, so then they're it. even. I think we're good. Okay, thanks. All right, so he's citing a poll. Who is one of your callers? Trump is helping the GOP because he's finally taking a hardline stance on immigration. So he cites a poll. See, I have conservative listeners. Well, you know, what the latest immigration polls say and do not say. Okay, it's a reliable source. Uh, Americans want massive cuts to legal immigration. But see, I don't think you oppose legal immigration. That's again why I think you differ from the president. Um, legal immigration. Well, you know, no, I don't oppose legal immigration. I don't think he does either. I think he wants to cut in half the number of people that come in. What, what do we have? Roughly a million a year, and he wants to cut that to a half million a year. Well, so you do. Oh no, no, I'm I'm asking if that's if that's his position. If you know, I don't I, think. I, I I think he does want to cut about in half legal immigration. That's okay. not what this article is though. This article is about cutting benefits for legal immigrants and to encourage them not to come. Legal immigrants, not illegal immigrants. That's, that's this one. Well, if we have, you know, it becomes an absolute moot point if we have merit um, selection. Mike, when did your family come to this country? You what, know, what century? Uh, you know, 1800 sometime, okay. I'm going to guess. Uh, I don't know. Would they have been allowed in on merit? Because my, my ancestors were dirt poor. Uh, my great-grandparents were. Um, and my guess is your ancestors probably were too, although I don't know. Answer, I don't know either. Okay. I have no idea about them. English? I've, I've never done Ancestry 1, 2, 3. English, and, Irish, Lane, um, English. Br British, Irish, Mongols, you know, combination of uh, all, all of the above. Yeah. The people not not were, a lot of Welsh. The people who were rich in England tended to stay in England. We tended to get the poor people. So... I, my guess is your ancestors were no, not much richer than mine. Well, if they had money. <laughs> they would have stayed in England. <laughs> it, it, it didn't stay in the family. Well, there you go. <laughs> but that's my point. How can you say you want married immigration now when. Well, merit when, is not just um, it's it's not just wealth. It's the ability to earn. You know, it's a it's a degree that's highly valued. And, I'm happy uh, to keep out known criminals and all that stuff. But as far as ability to earn, I think our new immigrants, and particularly our Latino immigrants, are some of the hardest working Americans we have. Oh, I agree. So what's I the absolutely merit? agree. What's the merit that you're looking for? 
I mean, this is all not what we're going to talk about, but. <laughs> but people well, we're talking about it now. People oh. can get the, uh, yeah. the banter yeah. back and forth yeah, on yeah, Facebook. On Facebook, that's right. Okay, we got two callers. We're going to try to get to both of them. Uh, we have Reggie, too. I'm not going to be able to get to Reggie. Let him know. He was on He was on two days ago. I'd rather get my new callers. So I'll get Tom in tomorrow. Tom apparently agrees with you. Can we do Reggie in like a minute? Oh, Tamara, who's my caller, of Joplin, Missouri, thought you sounded reasonable until you said the Trump Tower meeting was no big deal. And then, then you went off her reservation. I'm just... All right. That, that's that, good. That, that's her, I'll, I'll listen to him. That, 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 that's her, her view. We'll start with Tom, though, who agrees with you in, um, about immigration. Yeah, see, he's going to cite this poll that says people favor merit-based over family-based. But the question is, what does that mean? Hey, Mark. Yeah. So her name is pronounced Tamara. Oh, I know Tamara. sometimes Thank you say Tamara, but you it's that. Tamara. No, no, you also that. sound distant again. Are you far from really? the mic? Yeah, it sounds like you're being picked up on another mic or something's just not right. I don't know. Uh, wait a minute. Is this better? No. Uh, All right. I, I, uh, is it? Is mine okay? Is this Mike, Mike Lane sounds nice. All right, and, hold on. Is this better? Is this no. better? No. Increase my gain. Is this better? No. I, I don't know what it is. It's too late. Oh, wait. Talk, wait, talk wait, again now. All right. Is this better? There you go. Yeah. yeah. Is this better? Yes. Yes. All right. Now it's too loud. Though. Okay. All right. All right. We got it. All right. I'm ready to go. Okay. Here you go. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. Just a few minutes left, and we got a bunch of callers from Mike Lane. Let's start at Tom, line four, Columbus, Ohio. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, guys. I think the biggest immig Im issue in history is immigration. For example, a Harvard-Harris poll the other day showed that immigration is now the biggest issue. I mean, you're talking about Trump, and the biggest issue is just immigration. Tom, do you, you agree with the separation of families? Um. Do you think that was a good idea? Yeah, to, to keep our country from turning being swamped by the swamped by what? World. Swamped I by mean, what? The third world? So, so wait, wait, wait. It's interesting. You said swamped by the third world. You're okay with Norwegian immigrants, but not Mexican immigrants? Yeah, not all races are the same. You, you guys. Not all races are the same. You know what? I think you just answered my question, Tom. Thank you for your call. Uh, uh, Mike, can we say assume Tom is a racist? Um, well, uh, let me say I'll underscore what he says. Not all races are the same, but they all have the same ability and the same thing. The reason they're different races is because they are different, but that doesn't make their I, abilities or their contributions or their desirability different. I think race is a construct. It's one that exists because of historical reasons, but has no no real factor. But but that's that's what we think of when we think of Trumpets. We think of people like Tom. All right, Tamara, Joplin, Missouri, line her, five. Her line just dropped. Oh, I got off Tom to get to Tamara. That's call back, Tamara. All right, call back, Tamara. We only we, we got a few minutes left. When I think of a Trumpist, not a Republican, because I do I do think of well, I guess let me start. Let me go back with that then. I still think of Trumpists and Republicans as different. I consider you, Mike Lane, a Republican. Tamara is back. Oh, Tamara's back. All right, so Tamara, line five. Go ahead. Well, hello. Hello. I wanted to. I had a couple points. Okay, real and quick. He was doing a good. He was doing a really good job till you brought up the Trump Tower meeting. Mm -hmm. The day after that meeting, Donald Trump stood in front of ten thousand people and said, "We got dirt on Hillary right. Clinton coming." Yes, he did. And then he sat on Air Force One and wrote that letter for Don Don Jr. He dictated and Don Jr. and lied about it. Adoption. That's right. And lied about it. So you know what? I don't understand what you don't understand, that it is illegal for an American politician to conspire with a foreign country to overthrow a candidate in this country. And it comes with a 15-year prison sentence. So, so hang on, Tamara. What don't you understand about 18 that? USC Section 371 says it is illegal to get anything of value from a foreign government to help in a campaign. It's a criminal statute. Right. You don't dispute that. Uh, well, I haven't no, read the statute, that. but I'm going to take, I'm going to defer take to the me, lawyer take, in the room. Take it, take it my word for it. So therefore, why isn't this meeting a problem? Okay. Number one, because they didn't get anything of value. Number two, 
They um, tried to get so intent is what matters in the law. N- n- Attempted two, murder is a crime, even if you don't succeed n- in your murder. All right. Number number two, it was to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong. It was not real clear that this woman was acting on behalf of the Russian government at the time she was coming here, seek, you know, seeking this meeting. And number three, uh, I would, uh, I would, you know, reverse the tables and say, Tamara, you know, was it a uh, crime for Hillary Clinton to hire Christopher Steele and instruct him to go over to Russia and get information on Trump? First of all, Hillary Clinton did not hire. That's Christopher true. Yes, she did. No, 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 she didn't. No, yes, what, she did. what happened was Steele, Steele did the memo. He, that's right. He shopped it to to friends like yours who oppose. Hold on, let, 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 we only got to come slow. So let, let me let me just explain the situation. But I, I appreciate your point. Um, the uh, the steel memo was shopped first to Republicans for many many months who opposed Trump. They hired him and paid for it and reported it. Then he shopped it to the DNC for about a month. Not Hillary, but the DMC. They paid for it for a month. It was all reported. That's a very different. You can purchase things. You can purchase uh, foreign wine and serve it at a campaign event. It's perfectly fine to purchase things of value. What's not fine is to donate things of value, to donate, okay, to give well, a campaign contribution. And that's a very important distinction between well, nothing the Steele was, memo nothing, and- Nothing was donated to the Trump campaign. And Hillary Clinton, if there's collusion, uh, now, okay, it was laundered. She paid Fusion GPS. Oh, she paid Perkins Cooley. First of all, she, paid, did, she didn't pay. Who paid the you DNC. Know, Perkins, you know, uh, Fusion GPS, who paid Christopher Steele, who paid the Russians. And it was for, all for reported. The, for the crap. It was all reported. You know, but nonetheless, she was the one who, who was who's financing this whole no, thing. First, first of all, again, Republicans did it for many, many months before they ever yeah, brought some it guy to, named, to the Some DNC. guy named Mercer did it for a couple months. And nobody, you Not know. some guy. He's a very powerful Republican. But well, that's okay. Whatever. That's okay. The, the point is this. Um, you agree the Mueller investigation has to continue uh, until until he, he he figures out what happened. I mean, eighty two people. He's figured out what's happened. Eighty two. He, he knows people, nothing's happened, and he's trying to justify 82 his. Eighty uh, two people in the Trump orbit have been connected with the Russians. He's got I forget how many indictments. There the dozens, uh, and including several guilty pleas. Include and and Michael Cohen's about to flip. You don't think he's found enough because it's a lot more than was ever found against Bill Clinton. No, I don't think anything's been found. And, you know, the best you got is Carter Page. And as uh, as as has been said about him, you know, if this guy ain't a keystone cop, I don't know what he is. I think at the end of the day, there's enough to go right to the president of the United States. But that's the end of our time. Mike Lane, thanks for coming here. on the I'll Inside take Scoop. the bet. Thanks, Facebook audience. Hope you enjoyed the show. It's always uh, quick and contentious. Oh, yeah. So, so hold on. There's Mike saying goodbye. Bye, Bookers. Great job. Great job, Mike. Great job.